Hey guys, we're back with another video, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to save data in Godot. So without further ado, let's jump right into this video. So as you can see here, we already have a very basic scene, which I'm going to be using for the purpose of this demo. And like I said, it's very basic. It's basically just a control node, which I renamed to save test, a color rect, which is my background, a center container, a VBUX container, which is the parent of all the other nodes that I have here. So for example, my labels for the score, the health, I have a progress bar, which I renamed to health bar, which I already defined all the properties for in the inspector, such as the min value, max value, the step and the default value. So default value is 100 and I set the step to one so that I can increase and decrease by one. Then I have a bunch of different buttons, so a score button, an increase health button, as well as a decrease health button. Then uh, the last thing I have is the color picker button, which is going to be used to change the background color. Then as you can see, I also have a script already attached, which basically all we're doing in the script is we're getting a reference to all the nodes I'm going to be using. So I um, have a bunch of unready vars getting a reference to those nodes, such as all the buttons and labels and so forth. And I do have a ready function, which all we're doing for now is pass. Anyway, go ahead and select. Well, if in this case, I'm going to go and select my buttons and I'm going to go ahead and connect a press signal to the script and do that for the other buttons as well. So the score button, the increase health button and the decrease health button because I'm going to be doing something with them. And then I also want to do it for my color picker button. In this case, I'm going to be using a color change signal. And that's pretty much all we want to do in this script for now. So there's actually various different ways you can save data in Godot. For example, you can use JSON files, you can actually use resources as well. In this case, I'm going to be using Godot's built-in methods uh, to do it uh, since it's, uh, it's per honestly, I think it's the easiest way of doing it and there's no need to actually use something like JSON. Anyway, go ahead and create a new script, which I just renamed to save file and we can get started. So in this script, you want to start off by defining the path to your save file. To do this, I'm going to be using a const and then I just named it safe underscore file. You can name it whatever you want. It's equal to my save file path. So in this case, it's user colon slash slash safe underscore file. And I'm using the dot save extension. You can use whatever uh, name you want though. Anyway, after that, I need a variable for what I want to store. So in this case, I'm going to use an empty dictionary called game data. So var game data is equal to the empty dictionary. You could use floats, integers, strings. It depends on what type of data you want to save. Anyway, I'm defining a function ready. For now, we're just going to do pass and make sure you actually don't forget the underscore. Otherwise, you'll get in there. And now this is where we actually start writing the functions we need. So in this case, we're going to start with the save uh, data function. So func save data. And inside this function, all we want to do is var file is equal to file dot new. If we control click file, basically file is a class which is type to handle file reading and writing operations. And it even shows you a small example of how to save and load data. So you can read up on it if you want some more, but that's pretty much all we need to know. So we want to do file dot open to open the file that we're going to be using. We want to pass the uh, save file path to it. So in this case, the save file that we set up above and what we want to do. So file.write because we want to write to this file to save our data. Then after that line, we want to do file dot. And then in this case, I'm going to be using store underscore var. And basically this stores any variant value in the file. You could also use all the other different methods such as store string. Uh, there's also store line, store float, store double, uh, buffer, store eight, 64. So Godot, like I said, has many different methods that you can use to actually store data. In this case, I'm going to be using store var, which I think is the easiest to use. And basically, in this method, we want to pass the game data, so the data we want to save and store. After that, we simply want to close the file by doing file.close. And that's pretty much actually all you need for your save file function or your save data function. And now let's actually do the function for loading data. So func load data is equal to var file is equal to file.new. So after that, we're going to do if not 
file that file exists and then pass our save file path to it. So basically we're checking if the save file exists or if it doesn't exist. If it doesn't exist, we want to actually define default values for our game data. So game data is equal to our dictionary and I'm going to be specifying some key and values here. So I'm going to specify a key for my background color and then I can actually do other keys as well and in this case I'm gonna actually use color instead of background color since it's just easier to use and the value for this is gonna be of color with FFF as the default which is just a white color afterwards I can define another key for example for my score and in this case I'm gonna give it a default value of zero same thing for my health so a key for my health and then the value that I want. So in this case, it's going to be 100 by default. And you can also use other types of values such as strings and floats. It doesn't really matter since I'm using a dictionary here. And then we want to actually make sure that we save the data after that. Once we actually assign the default values. After that, outside of the if statement, we can do file.open and then pass the save file path so save file and then file dot read because we want to read the save file so basically this line of code here we're checking if the file doesn't exist if it doesn't exist we define uh, or we give our game data default values if it does exist we're opening our file and we're reading it afterwards we can do game data is equal to file dot get underscore var and this will pretty much do just that it will get our data that we saved using the store var method earlier so that should actually return the data that we want and then we can just do file dot close since we don't need to do anything else with our file so that's actually all you need uh, for your safe data function and your load data function now in my ready function i am going to go ahead and actually call my load data function that i already made that way it will actually create our save file for us because a save file doesn't actually currently exist so it's going to create one with the default values that we defined now to actually use this script we want to go to project project settings auto load and auto load it as a singleton or an auto load and i actually believe i forgot to save so let me make sure that i save and i think it's saved on my rest folder so i'm just gonna click and drag that into my save folder but it doesn't really matter where you save it you can save it wherever you want anyway let's go back to auto load and navigate to where it is and select it and then we click add to add it as an auto load or singleton and now we can actually start using it. So to use it, we want to go to the script that we want to use it in. In this case, it's my safe test script. And then I'm actually going to start by defining a variable at the top just to make things easier for me. So var save file is equal to save file, which is the auto load that I just made dot and then it's game data. So we're accessing the game data dictionary from our save file script by doing this. And I'm storing that into my save file. That way I don't have to constantly type save file that game data each time I want to get a value. And we actually want to make sure that it's an unready var, not just a var. Otherwise you will get an error uh, because the data isn't loaded yet. Anyway, in my ready function, I can just do save file dot score to access the uh, value of that key from my game data dictionary. You could actually also use uh, square brackets like so and do score like this, but I just prefer using that notation instead. So that's what I'm going to be sticking to. Anyway, I want to do plus equals one. And actually this should be in my score button press, not on my ready. So each time we press the score button, it will increase my score by one. After that line of code, I can do score.text, which is the label that we are using. So we're getting the text of that label and we're setting it to score mod s or percentage, but I'm just going to call it mod and then mod square brackets, save file dot score. So we're getting the score value from our game data dictionary that we defined here. And basically it's going to replace the mod s here. So that value is going to replace the mod s that we have in the string. 
Anyway, after that we can do save file and actually it should be um yeah it should be save file so the auto load not the variable and that's save data so we actually want to make sure that we store the new value into the save file and just to make things a lot easier to understand i'm going to rename the variable at the top to game data instead uh, so it's less confusing and then i made sure to change it wherever i use that variable it just makes things a lot easier to understand anyway now in my ready function i can actually do score.text and then set it equal to basically the same exact code that we have down here. So I can just copy and paste that. So when we launch the game, it's basically gonna get the score that's currently saved in the save file. And then for the health bar, we can do health bar dot value. And we're doing that value because in the inspector, if you notice when I adjust the value, it actually changes the percentage of our progress bar so the that value is what basically handles that so health bar that value is equal to game data dot health because that's what we call the key and so we're getting the health key with the value of 100 by doing that line of code then we can do color picker dot color is equal to my game data dot color again that's because that's what i called it in my game data dictionary then i can do background dot color is equal to the same thing game data dot color so i'm doing that color because that's what the property is called for the color rect and the color picker button anyway and when we actually press the increase health button, we want to increase our health. And we're going to do this by doing game data dot health is equal to, and it's actually going to be equal to game data dot health plus 10. If game data dot health is less than or equal to 100, else 100 so this is a ternary operator and basically like it says we're increasing the health by 10 if our current health is less than 100 if it's 100 then we're gonna just set it to a default value of 100 that way we prevent the health from going over 100 anyway we want to do update health bar which is a function that I'm gonna make right now um, so in this function, I'm going to do func update health bar, like so. And inside this function, I'm simply going to go ahead and actually do health bar dot value is equal to game data dot health. And then I'm doing save file, which is the auto load dot save data. So I'm calling the save data function to store the new health value into my save file and then i can simply call it in the uh, press function that we need so for example in the increased health press function and the decreased health press function and then pretty much we're using the same logic above for the health as well for decreasing the health so in this case it's going to be minus 10 and then we're checking if the game data that health is greater than or equal to zero else it's zero so it works basically the exact same way but we're in this case reducing the health not increasing it and then making sure that we actually call update health bar as well to store the new value of the health in our state file then for the color picker uh change function we can just do background that color is equal to game data that color but in this case I'm actually just gonna do color because we don't actually need to do game data that color since we're going to be basically essentially using uh, this color and we want to see the background change as soon as we make the change anyway game data that color is equal to the color so the new color we're getting from our color picker button and then save file dot save data to store that new color into our save file so every time you want to actually store a new value for your dictionary or whatever type of variable you're using you gotta call the save data function and if we actually test this out as you can see if i change the color 
and then if I go ahead and actually press the score button and increase the score, it will actually you know show in the label, in the background, in the health, as you can see here. So we can increase health, we can decrease health, like so. And if we actually close this, and then we relaunch it, it should actually be the exact same. And as you can see, we do have a score of 20, a health of 50, and then the background is that dark green color. So it is already working. So congratulations, you have a save file that actually works. So hopefully you understand how saving data works in Godot. And I hope that you found this video uh, helpful. And if you did, make sure you leave a like and consider subscribing. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.